Hello everyone, today we are going to discuss about what is abdominal aortic aneurysm and how the abdominal aortic aneurysm repair procedure done in cath lab. Let's start with introduction. Endovascular stent grafting, or endovascular aneurysm repair, is a surgical procedure done inside of aorta using a thin tube called a delivery catheter. Now we'll see what is abdominal aortic aneurysm. Abdominal aortic aneurysm is an enlargement of the aorta, the main blood vessel that delivers blood to the body, at the level of the abdomen. An abdominal aortic aneurysm can be life-threatening if it bursts. An increase in diameter of 50% compared to the adjacent normal aortic segment, or sac diameter greater than 3 cm. Now we're going see the classification of aneurysms, that is, morphologically, fusiform affecting the entire arterial circumference, or saccular affecting only part of the arterial circumference. And we can decide by their relationship to the renal arteries, suprarenal, juxtarenal, oriferinal. Now we'll see what are indications for abdominal aortic aneurysm repair. Emergent. A. Known or suspected rupture. B. Symptomatic aneurysm regardless of aneurysm diameter. C. Rapidly expanding aneurysm, greater than 1 cm growth in 12 months. Elective. A. Asymptomatic fusiform aneurysm. B. Atypical aneurysm twice the diameter of normal inferenal aorta. C. Smaller abdominal aortic aneurysms with either concomitant common iliac aneurysms requiring repair or associated thromotic or embolic complications. The contraindications for abdominal aortic aneurysm repair. A. Patent inferior mesenteric artery, in the setting of significant superior mesenteric artery, narrowing where the inferior mesenteric artery is the predominant blood supply to the bowel. B. Patients must meet anatomic criteria for successful endograft placement including appropriate proximal and distal landing zones, as well as suitable access vessels. Now we are going to see the abdominal aortic aneurysm repair, and how they are performing in cath lab. The procedure begins with bilateral common femoral artery access, is obtained either percutaneously, or via a surgical cutdown, and systemic anticoagulation achieved, with intravenous heparin. After taking femoral access, a pigtail marker catheter is advanced via the contralateral access to the level of the renal arteries. After that, an abdominal aortogram is performed to confirm pre-procedural length and measurements. After taking measurements, the ipsilateral floppy guide wire access is exchanged through a diagnostic catheter for a superstiff guide wire that is positioned in the descending thoracic aorta. After placing the superstiff wire, the main body of the device and the introducer sheath are advanced over the superstiff guide wire, so that the superior end of the endograft is at the level of the lowest renal artery. Under magnification, the superior end of the covered portion of the endograft and lowest renal artery are centered on the field, so as to reduce errors caused by parallax. Additionally, the image intensifier is ungulated and rotated so as to best profile the lowest renal artery, as determined from pre-procedure cross-sectional imaging. Then, intermittent angiography at this location is performed, with adjustments made to position, the endograft immediately distal to the lowest renal artery. Once appropriate position is confirmed, the trunk and ipsilateral limb are deployed, under fluoroscopic guidance. A superstiff guide wire is advanced through the pigtail marker catheter, which is then positioned, with a marker at the bottom of the contralateral gate. A retrograde contralateral sheath angiogram is performed, in the appropriate obliquity so as to profile the hypogastric artery origin. This will allow correct length determination and positioning of the contralateral limb so as to preserve hypogastric artery flow. At this time, the contralateral gate is cannulated with a guide wire. Once cannulated, a pigtail catheter is advanced over the guide wire and spun within the main body of endograft to confirm appropriate location within the endograft rather than in the aneurysm sac. After that, the pigtail catheter is exchanged over the superstiff guide wire for the contralateral limb, which is positioned appropriately, and then deployed. After deploying, if an ipsilateral iliac extension is needed, a similar technique can be used to determine length and position. At this time, proximal, distal, and overlapping attachment sites are balloon dilated, to achieve a maximum profile. This process is called, ironing. After balloon dilating the stent, a pigtail catheter is reintroduced, to the level of the renal arteries, and a final aortogram is performed. After aortogram, particular attention is made to renal and hypogastric arterial flow, as well as the presence of endoleaks. If necessary, 
secondary interventions can be performed as needed. After checking with aortogram, if everything looks fine, the sheaths from both common femoral artery is closed by using perclus devices, or the cut down is closed by suturing and dressing applied to prevent bleeding, and appropriate dose of heparin is maintained by checking the activated clotting time. In this picture you can see the both pre and post stenting of the abdominal aortic aneurysm arteries. Post Procedure Management Immediate and in-hospital post-procedure management entails the evaluation of bilateral groin access sites for infection or hematoma, assessment of distal perfusion and renal function, and early ambulation. Hospital stay is typically one to three days. Following recovery from the initial procedure, indefinite long-term imaging surveillance is required. Particular attention is made to abdominal aortic aneurysm diameter, detection, and classification of endoleaks, and evaluation of the endograft morphology. Physical examination and imaging follow-up is recommended at 1 to 3 months and 6 months after the procedure. If no endoleak is identified, then patients are followed at yearly intervals. If an endoleak is present, the patients are followed every 6 months for the first 2 years and yearly thereafter unless treatment is mandated.